Welcome back to another game design code video and this is once again the second part of a video where we actually show a few pretty cool things but of course now this is the practical part how to do that in Game Maker and this will be a two part so if you're just interested in one you can just skip ahead I guess you know how to use the timeline uh, jump point and we're gonna do one thing so how to do that in Game Maker, which is super, super simple, basically one sprite and then we rotate it and make it a little bit smaller. Or we do this dude here, which is then with particles. So basically the hit ring and then those hit spikes, which are just coming from the center. And then I'm going to quickly go through the code. And if uh, uh, I know this is a little bit tedious to, to, uh, well, to check this out. So in the comments, you will see the whole code of the particle system, how to do that. Um, you can just copy paste it and boom, the way it goes. So if you want to join me on this small little adventure, then stick around. This is One Up Indie. I am a developer. So if you like what you're seeing and hearing, then why not consider sharing, liking and subscribing to the channel, of course. Alrighty, so the first thing is once again, here with one sprite, Super easy to do. For that, we just need, well, the sprite itself. And this one is a huge one. So we play it. It's beautiful. So here, wow, it's really looking cool. But of course, finding those high quality images, a little bit difficult. So let's say you are a game maker and you spawn, uh, I don't know, an instance, which we, I don't know, just call hit sprite, call it whatever you like. It does not really matter. And then once the animation of the thing is gone, so here, just take the hit sprite, put it in there, and then once the animation is ended, we destroy it. Old stuff, I'm, I use that like so often in uh, my videos, so that should be an old head. And then because the thing is quite huge, we just, well, scale it a little bit down, I guess not just 0 0.5, so not just half of it, a little bit less because this is a huge beast. And of course here, just scale it down and then give it a specific angle so we just rotate that dude in there so how does it look like kind of like this here yes you can see huge beast here therefore first of all we just scale it down significantly i guess this is definitely more than 0 0.5 then we just spawn it and then we just rotate that dude that's what we are doing that's it this is the whole thing and then we just play it and then away you go so that was for the visual guys and now we come to the more code heavy part in quotations because now we need to do that with a particle system so away you go so the first thing which you need to have is of course once again a particle system on which you want to well place your particles that is a no-brainer hopefully if not um well link in the description below to a little bit longer video there will be uh advanced new version from my side where I just show you how to do that a little bit more uh, more efficient spoiler constructors arrays and so on like ooh, a little bit more difficult but of course definitely more convenient on the long run for you so let's actually start with the hit ring so for that we just say like hey create a store in our variable particle hit ring a new particle and now we need to define it so the first thing is we need to give it kind of a thing which we want to create so for here we got those shapes and those shapes are these dudes here and we just take the circle so we take what we have it's already in built in game maker so we can use this shape of course we can use the other ones i don't know questionable ones if you like so star and so on actually i never used it but the ring or the circle are definitely a cool thing and of course cloud and smoke also so let's go into game maker set this to circle then we set the life life just means like hey how long is it sticking around it should be short so 10 is like 10 steps this is one sixth of a second a very short it's like popping in and then popping out of existence this is the way it goes because hits are like a very quick impact thing and then the next thing is this is optional kind of a fade out thing so we start off with um, I don't know 65% going up to 80% so let's say around uh, five steps we are 80% and then we just fade out into nothingness into zero so once again it's coming in and then it's going out and of course for now this would be a static thing 
we need to define its size. So we start off as a small little thing. So 0.1 seconds, 0.1%. Uh, uh, so this is 10% of the shape. And then if you just uh, hover over here over the tooltip, size increase. That just means we're increasing it quite significantly. So that thing is getting big very fast. And that's the idea. But because it's just sticking around for one sixth of a second, it's just and going out quickly uh, out of existence. And therefore it feels all right. And then of course we need to create it. So I don't know, this is one method. So this is what you write then, um, I don't know, somewhere else because it's all uh, well here just a setup phase in our particle system. And then you just use this line somewhere else where you want to create your particle on this specific position, this particle which we created here. Of course, it should be actually like this. Give it, I don't know, your color, if you like white or red or blue or whatever, and then how many you want to have, because you can have multiple ones. But of course, it makes sense just to create one of those rings. Easy peasy. And then let's go to the second part. This is a little bit more tricky, not too much to be honest, but we need to take a more few a uh, few more things into account. So what do I mean by that? So first of all, our ring thing here. First of all, we do the same. Now our uh, spike thing. So this is this crummy little sprite which we're having it needs to be angled to the right uh, in the center. So as you can see, it's not looking, uh, you know, magical, but we need to do one thing here which is just place it here and then move it really rapidly in one direction. But then, so the, so for, in order for it to look good, we need to move fast and then we just make it a little bit slow. So, and then we kind of stop it, which is the idea behind it. And we have kind of an inbuilt um, friction, but of course you will see that later on. And of course, depending what kind of direction we are flying to, we need to rotate it dude. So let's say we are flying upwards, then we need to rotate it also in this direction. And then because this thing is looking not too good, we squish it. And then if you do just do it like fast, it's looking cool. So once again, it's better than to squish it um, well horizontally, uh, squish it vertically. So this is vertically and horizontally, we just stretch it out and therefore it's looking much neater and nicer. So how does that look like in code? Well, the few static elements are as follows. So first of all, we just create once again a new particle in our create event of our particle system. And then we just say like, hey, maybe we sh should stick around a little bit longer. So it's almost one second here. Play with the values the way you like it. But of course, one second is a pretty good sweet spot here. Uh, maybe a little bit less, but but of, but of course it does look cool. And then once again, um, we can use um, the uh, alpha three and then we just fade out. This is the same as in the ring because we want to be a little bit more transparent. Then in the end, just it goes away, which is cool. And then now we don't use a shade. We now we use as the specific sprite, which I showed you. So here, this dude here, and then well, we use our crummy sprite, nothing specific here. So let's go into the tooltips. So you can actually follow me here. Nothing here, animation, straight, random, all zero, zero, zero. It doesn't really matter. It's just one sprite. And here we come to the interesting part. Uh, we define, I don't know, kind of the size in which we want it to be. And here we reduce the size at some point. So basically it's popping out and then it's getting smaller, significantly smaller. So basically it's getting slower and smaller, which is just having this cool thing. So it's smaller, getting smaller, getting slower, and it's fading out. And all these things together make it definitely appear visually appealing. And then of course, scale, as you can see, horizontally, we, we make it definitely a larger, so three times. And then here, uh, we can actually squish it if we like. This is up to you how, how squished you want to have that. And here, uh, this is the code. And then the last part, which is the static part, is we want to give it a specific speed. So between six and eight, some values. So it's going fast out. But of course, 
as the friction value to speed increase, we can actually import a negative value. So it's moving fast out, but then you kind of have a counter value, which is then reducing the speed um, until it's becoming uh, really small. So here, this is the way it goes. And then for example, this is how you could spawn it, but we cannot just spawn it because we have the problem that once we are spawning it, it would just go to the right because we haven't defined the direction. But if we have one direction set, then it would be just going into one, which is kind of pointless. We want it to go radially all the time. So here, therefore, we have to each time reset the particles direction and orientation. So here, this part, once again, is not part of the setup phase or so the create phase of the particle itself. This is being changed and hot, hot swapped all the time during uh, spawning. So here somewhere outside. So the first thing which we do is change, uh, give it a random direction. So we just say, hey, some something radially between zero and 360. And then we apply this value to the direction. So here direction min, direction max. It's just one fixed value for this specific particle which we are spawning. And because it needs to rotate towards this direction, so it looks well authentic, we need to have the orientation with the same angle, min and max, and it's just one value. And then we spawn it the same as uh, before. And this is how the whole magic goes. Kind of easy peasy um, once you do it three, four times. And then um, this is how you can set up your own particle system, which is very rewarding and very cool to see. Already that was it from my side. Hopefully you enjoyed this here and see you in the next one. Bye bye.